So I have to admit that previously I've not been a very good record keeper when it comes to my trades and investments but in the past couple of years I've started to be a bit more diligent and especially since doing this channel as well Yay! and for me right now I'm trying to be more diligent with doing portfolio reviews as well and as of end of June I started thinking about hey why don't I do my own half year portfolio review and whatever findings that I have I just wanted to share with you today. Now, I'm not going to be sharing with you some stratospherically high results. In fact, I'd say that my results are so-so. And what I want to do is hopefully give you an honest view of my thinking process and really the imperfections when it comes to managing a portfolio. I'll do a quick walkthrough of what I'm holding right now. Then I'll go through what has went well and what hasn't in the past half year. And then I'll benchmark myself versus some of the robots I've been using as well as the indices. And finally, what am I looking forward to in the second half of 2021? Hey guys, it's Sun Min and welcome back to Your Money Game, the show where we'll save, invest and feel better about money. So here's a snapshot of what I'm holding in my portfolio as well as the percentage allocation of the asset. SCHB covers the total US market and I think of it as somewhat like a permanent position which I'm not really thinking of changing. VBR and AVUV cover small cap value and that's where I have pretty much the highest tilt of my portfolio towards and finally to round it up for the US it is ARKK which is an ETF filled with high growth or really aggressive growth type of stocks. All in all US accounts for about 50% of my total portfolio holdings. The next biggest region is China and this is where I hold CNYA which covers about 400 plus of kind of more traditional Chinese industries when it is specifically China Asia's. KWEB is a concentrated ETF portfolio of internet related stocks and ABEM covers emerging markets broadly but about 30% of its allocation actually goes towards Hong Kong. Gold and silver are there as well because I wanted to reduce my risk to some of the kind of high valuations that we're seeing in the markets. So I covered a bit of that last week, so you can check that video out if you wanted to understand why. And as of this point, I'm holding a portion of my portfolio in cash as well because I recently exited a position, and more on that later. So let's start with what's worked well. I've held VBR since last year, so if I took the performance from January 1st all the way to 30th of June, it's been up about 22%, so that's done the best for me as a single holding. I've held on to SCHP for a long time now, but the first half of the year, it has shown again the strength of the US markets and it's done pretty well, going up about 15 plus percent. And the last one I want to cover is PVBC, which was more of a trade rather than an investment. And I got into it in February and I just got out of it recently as well. And the thinking behind that was that, hey, inflation was rising. Uh, oil was benefiting from it and I just again rode that wave. I satisfied with what I got which was about 17 plus percent and I just exited the trade as well. Now let's move into what has been doing so-so. So in early 2021, I was holding on to another ETF called SCHA which is specifically of small cap stocks. And what happened was I decided to double down on small cap value which is why I sold it out and I bought AVUV. However, as a part of my portfolio, since I entered it, it's pretty much gone nowhere and traded sideways. For my exposure to emerging markets, I've held on to IEMG since January, but I've since swapped it out for AVEM, which focuses more on small cap value as well. And again, as a position, it hasn't really gone anywhere, unfortunately. I've been holding on to ARKK since last year, and it has done very well for me, but at the same time, it has taken quite a bit of a tumble in 2021. And right now, it's still up about 3 plus percent for me, which is okay, but mm, kind of oh, alright. The same pattern can be seen with CNYA, which had a great start of 2021, but took a massive dive. But now it's up roughly about a couple of percent. And by the way, if you're finding value in a video like this, I would appreciate your support in clicking that like and sub button because it really helps my channel grow. Thanks. Finally, let's talk about the blemishes and the bad moves that I've made so far in the first half of 2021. 
Earlier in January, I made a very impulsive gold trade, which pretty much got stopped out within four days. Uh, the only saving grace is that I still practice good risk management. So the trade didn't go my way and I got stopped out. I deserved the hit. What's funny is that I'm currently holding on to two losing positions as well, which are gold again, as well as silver. And the reason why I've moved some of my money into those two ETFs, uh, it's because of, again, the fears of devaluation of the US markets, a little bit of the inflation trade as well. The biggest laggard by far is my losing position in KWEB, which is the Chinese internet stocks. Now, I don't know if you've been paying attention to any of the news, but the Chinese regulators have been cracking down on all these big, massive internet companies, and that has really soured the mood. And since February, from a high of about 100 plus, 104 I think, it has dropped to about 63, 64 today. So here are some of my learnings, which I hope that you can take away as well. So looking back to my gold trade back in January, that was clearly an impulsive move. And again, my bad for that. It just goes to show that how vulnerable we are sometimes to the impulses in the market. And if you are ever making such a trade as well, as long as you're staying protected, make sure you have the right stop losses, or at least you know when you're supposed to get out. And that's my lesson. The next point is that my overall portfolio has done quite okay for the year, it's about 12% up. So overall, I still feel that I'm relatively satisfied. But when you start to compare it with what the S&P 500 has done, which is about 16-ish percent so far, you start to wonder whether all those efforts hmm. are really worth it. My point is that more effort clearly shows that it does not necessarily mean more gains because things can go wrong and the more I complicated and messed around with my allocations, the more it has underperformed the broad index. And it's a humble reminder as somebody who's aware about passive investing and that kind of movement, that sometimes sitting still and doing nothing really is the best move. Because if you look at VT, which is the total world stock market, basically you own everything, it has done about 12% so far. Wow. And that's really just owning one ETF. So I have a couple of other benchmarks as well, which are the robo-advisors that I've been using. So what I've done is I've just taken the portfolio value from the 1st of January until the 30th of June and measured that as the performance. My Endowers 100% equity portfolio has done about 16% so far for the year, which is a pretty impressive rate because that just keeps up with the S&P 500. For better context, the Endowers 100% Equity Portfolio is made out of four funds and it really is a more permanent position where they don't really swap out the funds or the assets uh, depending on the conditions. Yeah. It's quite fixed. My Stash Away 36% Risk Index Portfolio has done about 7.5% so far. It holds about 8 ETFs and its approach is quite different to Endowers because they kind of look at economic conditions and they'll swap out the different assets and the weightage depending on how they see things. So clearly it's been a mixed bag of results. I've kept up with the total world ETF like VT, but I've underperformed the S&P 500. I've underperformed in Dowers as well, but I've done a little bit better than Stash Away. Now to round this off, here's what I'm keeping my eyes on for the rest of the year in 2021. So I talked about the US market valuations previously and that hasn't changed. I still think it's pretty high. Uh, for me, I don't take it as a market timing indicator to sell everything. So that's why I've moved some of my holdings into gold and silver. Uh, I might continue to do that a bit more. And on top of that, any new funds that I'm putting in, I don't think I'll be buying into US based hmm. equity at this point. The last thing that I'm keeping track of is this whole inflation deflation narrative. And it's because it has such a huge influence on how your portfolio might perform moving forward. Simply put, in an inflationary story, people believe that interest rates, specifically the US 10-year yield, will continue to go up. And if it does, it would really hurt growth-oriented stocks and it should benefit value-oriented stocks. So that's me and my first half of the year performance review. Yay! And uh, if you've got any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll get to it. And hey, if you've got value, 
please hit that like and subscribe button because again it helps my channel really grow and i'm going to be back again next sunday with a brand new video so until then you take care keep playing your own game